what do you think I mean when I say that everything has a cost factor? It literally means it's costing you something to do whatever it is you're going to do. That's the cost factor. Welcome to Casting Actors Cast, insights for actors on acting in the business of show. Casting director Jeffrey Dreisbach takes you behind the scenes and reveals secrets to a successful acting career. You can find out more on the web at castingactorscast.com. Please enjoy, like, and share Casting Actors Cast. Now, here's your host, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach with McCorkle Casting in New York, and you've tuned in to Casting Actors Cast, the podcast for actors. We're giving advice and insights on the business of show, everything you need to know about what it is to be an actor, what it takes, and how to do it. So I want to thank you so much for joining us. I always like to thank you at the top of the podcast for joining us. Please tell your friends about Casting Actors Cast, and please go to castingactorscast, all one word, dot com. If you would like to get some more information, you can download some past episodes. Also, there's some freebies. And now I'd like to share my big announcement. I think a couple of podcasts ago, I talked about a big announcement. Well, here it is. If you go to castingactorscast.com, all one word, and you click on the getting in touch with Jeffrey or jump into the talent pool, there's a form there. Simply fill out that form. I just want to know, the reason I want you to fill out the form, I want you to let me know that you're out there. And all you do is fill out the form in your email address. I promise you, I don't sell your email address or anything like that. I hang on to it, but it's always a good kind of positive reinforcement for me to know who's listening to the podcast. And if you do that, you click on the form, that opens up an absolutely free, yes, I did say absolutely free book that I wrote called Conversation Pieces Out of the Studio, the voiceover workshop for professional actors. It is a hundred page workshop type oriented book. I'm really proud to say that it's been in several colleges and university training programs as part of their actor training. It really is, I think, a comprehensive 100 pages with really valuable information about what it is to be a voice actor. We talk a lot about preparation. We give you all kinds of material in that free book. It's a downloadable PDF. All you have to do is click on it, and it's all yours, and it's absolutely free of charge. It's a way of saying thank you so much for being a listener. Please tell your friends about it, too. I really want to be able to make this available to anyone who has any interest about going into voice acting work. So that's it. That's my big announcement, a free book for you. Go to Casting Actress Cast, click on Jump Into the Talent Pool, and then you can have that, that particular book. Um, it has all kinds of exercises in it for you to work on. And uh, like I said, I've been really, really pleased with the reaction that this book has gotten. And now I'm just offering it absolutely free of charge. So thanks so much for listening. That's my commercial. That's it. I'm done now <laughs> with my commercial. A free book. Not much I'm selling these days other than trying to give you some good advice and some feedback based on my experience in the business. Today, I'm calling the podcast The Cost Factor. And early on in my relationship with Pat McCorkle, I uh, often heard her saying, you know, Jeff, everything has a cost factor. And at that time, I think she was referring to the actor putting in the work, putting in the time um, and not getting the job we're putting in the work and putting in the time and getting the job. What does it cost us? What is the literal cost factor involved? Often it's time. And oftentimes it can be literally the cost of being an actor. And that's the point of today's podcast, the cost factor. We're going to talk about financial planning for actors. Now, don't get kind of turned off or don't turn off the podcast, please. Stay tuned. I promise you, I'll try and make this as interesting as possible. But if you're anything like me, I always had kind of a negative reaction about 
uh, business stuff. And in fact, one of my big regrets when I started acting was that I just didn't know enough about the business side of things. I didn't know enough about how to take care of my financial situation to the degree that I needed to. And I found myself getting in all kinds of little interesting traps and troubles. And I really want to make today about starting fresh, getting organized so that you can do your best work. So the cost factor, financial planning for actors. What does it cost to be an actor? Let's talk literally first, because I think that's the most important. I don't think it's really a bad idea for actors to sit down with a pencil and paper or a computer, whatever. (laughs) That's old school, right? Pencil and paper. But I really would love for you to take a strong uh, stance and assessment about where you are in the planning stages of being the CEO of your own company as an actor. And I've said that before, you are the CEO of your own company. You literally are in charge of all things that you are in charge of when you are an actor. Let's talk first about the line down the middle of the page. So you draw a line down the middle of the page. (laughs) And the first thing you want to do is on the left-hand side, you want to write out business expenses. What is it costing you? Or what are the fees and charges and what are the financial commitments involved, therefore expenses, in being an actor? So I'm going to go down the checklist with you, and this is what should go on your list. And on the other side of that column, you need to put what the amount is that you are planning on spending, and then a slash mark, and then what your actual expense is. Just because I think information is power, and the more information you have about this, I think the better off you are in being in control of those things that you can be in control of. After all, I think that's the big secret to being an actor, is really having a firm understanding of those things you can control and those things you have no control over. And, you know, I've talked about that, how it relates to auditions. You have no control over what the casting director thinks of you. You do have control over the amount of money you spend on transportation to get to the audition. (laughs) So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Very, very practical here. So there you go, the center line down your page and business expense on the left-hand column. So let's write down first pictures. Pictures are still the calling card in the industry. We still ask for pictures when you come to our auditions. Pictures are often being asked for from agents so that they can share their pictures. I know so much is done electronically now, but it's still vital for you to have actual, tangible, in your hand pictures, 8 by 10s color, um, that look really, really good. Now, let's break out the pictures expenses a little bit. You have to pay for a good photographer. Now, if you have any questions about getting your picture done and getting it done professionally, please listen to the podcast about getting your picture done. And so I'm not going to spend more time on the do's and don'ts, but there's a whole do's and don'ts section on what you do when you hire a photographer to take your 8x10, your headshot. So the photographer can be quite an expense sometimes. I recommend very, very highly that you don't do this on the cheap. This is not the time where you do it with a, you know, your Uncle Bill out in the backyard with a brownie camera. I guess a lot of you don't even know what a brownie camera is anymore. But my point is you've really got to get a professional headshot photographer. A wedding photographer is not a headshot photographer. Your Uncle Joe is not a headshot photographer unless he does it professionally. Make sure you get professional headshots. Don't try to skimp on probably the most important tool in your toolkit, which is your picture. Take the time, get it done well, and photographers can be quite expensive. You can get good headshots done for maybe 250 American dollars, all the way up to 1,000 American dollars. So that can be rather expensive. I'm not sure it's 100% true that you get what you pay for with pictures, but there I've said it. Do your research. Make sure you get a good headshot photographer that's going to represent you well. The second expense with photography is getting your 8x10 reproduced. You want to make sure that it looks good electronically so that when you 
set it up on your website or you set it up on Actors Access, that it looks really, really good on the thumbnail version of that picture. And you also want to make sure you have good quality 8x10 stock paper that you put it on. I still get on occasion people who just sort of run it through their bubble jet printer and it's just awful, just terrible. It doesn't reflect well on how you feel about yourself in the business, so make sure that the reproductions are there. Second expense after pictures would be resumes. Resumes have to be cut down to that 8x10 size. They have to be formatted well. I have to be able to see your resume clearly. There's not too much stuff, but there's essential information that I need to know on your resume. Now, it's not that expensive, but if you are not really adept at uh, laying out a nice format, a nice looking resume, do your research. It's going to cost you something other than the paper. It's going to cost you some time. But a really good, easy to read resume that has all the right contact information. And again, if you haven't heard the podcast on resumes, I encourage you in the strongest possible terms to please check out resumes. Another expense that you might not have thought of are postcards and postage. I like postcards with your picture on it, with your name slugged on it. Um, and on the back side, you can treat it just like a regular postcard. But it's some space for you to tell me what you're working on, what you're up to, what's going on with you, just giving me some information. Obviously, you need to be able to send those out. So postage becomes important as well. Please refrain from spending a lot more money than you need to. Understand what the purpose is. If you're going to be appearing in a television show, for example, or you have a, a, a role coming up that you want other people to see, then maybe you might want a specialty postcard for that. You know, nowadays you can get them relatively inexpensive, but it still is an expense for you to consider. Now, the next one after postcards, I'm assuming, and maybe this is a, a, a bad assumption on my part, but you really should have access to the Internet. If you don't have a laptop or a computer, that should be a very important first consideration investment to have. You don't have to have the latest or greatest. You have to be able to send and receive email efficiently. And you have to be able to put your information up on your website. So access to the Internet is critically important. Another expense that I need to bring up here are the classes. Many of you who are just getting out of college training programs, BFA or MFA or even high school, and you think, I'm just going to be able to jump right into getting some acting roles, know that part of the requirement in my mind, and this is my opinion, but classes are and should be thought of as a never-ending contribution to your talent. You should always, always, always be enrolled in an acting class, a voice class, a dance class, some kind of continuing education training. And that's what you can call it if you want. But there are expenses to taking classes. And you should put in your budget enough money aside to take care of those classes where you see a need. Now, it might be specialty audition classes like auditioning for the camera or for specific television shows that you want to audition with that casting director. Or it may be just, I want to get better at scene work. Or maybe I just want to do more classical acting training. Whatever it is, please put that in your budget when you're putting together your business expenses. Now, additional class expenses that you might not have thought of but should at least be considered would be those scripts. Uh, downloading um, and printing out acting scripts. Going to the bookstore and or ordering online scripts of shows that you might be auditioning for, or materials that you want to hang on to, uh, that is an expense that you might not have thought of. Also, if you're going to be taking some voice classes, maybe some singing classes, where are you getting your music? Obtaining the music is really a vital aspect of maintaining those singing classes that you might be taking. And additionally, if you're taking movement classes or dance classes, the clothing that's appropriate for your movement and or dance classes. Moving on to our business expenses, what kind of transportation are you taking? What are the cost factors involved? Are you driving to your auditions? Are you taking public transportation? 
Is somebody driving you to those auditions? Who is it? How much is that costing you? Are you taking a taxi to your auditions? Um, all of those things should at least be thought of and thought through when you are putting your budget together. And how much that costs and how much you spend is up to you. But think it through. What's going to get you there the most efficient way? What's the least expensive way so it's not a burden on your budget? But on the other hand, you want to make sure that you have reliable transportation lined up for whatever opportunity presents itself. Now, just a quick side note that just came off the top of my head is that do you have your passport? Is your passport in order? If you don't have a passport, please apply for one. I can't tell you how many times we've had situations where we needed to send the actor out of the country on a shoot for a television show or for a film, a feature film, and the actor didn't have their passport. Just having that is a really, really great idea. And that's just a side note. I guess it's sort of, if you <laughs> think about it, it has kind of a relationship to transportation. <laughs> You know, leaving, <laughs> coming, and going. Anyway, let's move on from there. After transportation, let's talk about the audition clothing. Now, I have an entire podcast about the actor's wardrobe. I encourage you to listen to that. But keeping your acting, auditioning clothing, rather, not your acting clothing, but your auditioning wardrobe separate from your regular wardrobe is a really cool idea. Set some money aside for putting you in clothes that make you really feel good about yourself. Moving on, I call this subscription fees and fees that you probably hadn't factored in to your overall acting budget. But online subscription fees to uh, websites like Actors Access here in the United States or Backstage I would not, by the way, go ahead and start spending money on all of these audition websites and getting information from auditions from a subscription feed-based website. I just would really hesitate to do that unless you're absolutely sure that it's provided you the kind of information that can be helpful to you. But I've seen many times um, actors spending more money than they need to. But Actors Access is just one of those where you can get a lot of information without having to sign up. Also, Backstage.com is a really great place. But being very prudent about where you uh, spend your subscription fees, but nevertheless, you should factor that into your budget. Let's move on, right? So we covered subscription fees and transportation, audition, audition clothing. Um, what about the union? Union dues. What about the expense of joining the union? A Screen Actors Guild and uh, Actors' Equity are both uh, performing unions here in the United States, and they can be rather expensive to join. Um, they're not easy to get into. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they'll have, like, you know, specials <laughs> where, you know, you can join if you have been in the business for a particular period of time, and we should really do a whole podcast on what it is about the unions that are are great and what isn't so great about the unions. On the negative side is that I think they're sometimes quite expensive. But if you do join the union, you know that you have ongoing union dues that should be part of your financial planning. Also, what's your Internet presence like? Um, do you pay for a website? If you do, how much is that? Have you paid for your .com name? If you have incurred additional expenses as it relates to putting yourself on the Internet and having that Internet presence, then that definitely should go into your financial planning. Now, after that, there are some additional incidental expenses that I think are worthy of bringing up here. One is gym membership. Being in physical shape, good physical shape, um, is is a, a really important aspect to being a good actor, I think. So what's that cost? How much is that? Are you a person who just jogs and runs on your own? That's great. Maybe it's not going to cost you very much. Maybe a pair of sneakers once every six months or something. How about business gifts? You're going to take a, an agent out to lunch. You're going to take somebody out to lunch so that you can talk to them about business things. There are some incidental expenses that you would 
probably not think about. It would just probably come out of your pocket. I guess what I'm trying to say is the focus of you as a professional really means that you have your line down the page and have a very clean, organized approach to the business. Finally, I'll say that there are non-tangible cost factors. The non-tangible cost factors are the money job that you have outside of acting, that you have some kind of income stream or you are in a financial situation where you know you have some stability and the cost factor for some money jobs is that it costs you time and it costs you a lot of energy and that can be very problematic. So take a look at your money job situation. Is there something there that might need to be adjusted? Another non-tangible but equally important cost factor is the time it takes to assemble these materials to keep working on your career is also a time management issue. So all of those can be non-tangible costs, but still should be at least brought up and thought of as you put together your financial plan. So time is definitely a non-tangible because you can't really decide how much time it's going to take until you start spending it. And that comes with like putting the materials together or working on a website or going to classes. All of those have cost factors. And that leads us right up to the end (laughs) of our podcast today. I hope it's been helpful to you to kind of lay these items out for you to at least address and consider in order to help organize, because the more structured you are in your life, the better it is for your creative side. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach, and this is Casting Actors Cast. You've been listening to Casting Actors Cast with host Jeffrey Dreisbach. Find out more at castingactorscast.com and let us know if you would like us to cover topics you're interested in. Thanks for listening. I'm Matthew DeSarno.